Harwood, I'm sorry, the Harwood Zoning Board of Appeals, public hearing via remote access. I have to read the governor's statement. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, this suspending will now be recorded. Suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL chapter 30A section 18 and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Town of Harwich Board of Appeals on March 31st, 2021, opening at 7 p.m. is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the uh, proceedings as provided for in this order. Uh, presumably, everybody who wants to get on is on, but if not, and you can't see us and you couldn't hear us, you can go to the town website and under uh, boards, go to the Board of Appeals, and there'll be a meeting agenda for March 31st tonight. And in there, there will be a link you can click on to take you to go to meeting um, the, the screen and then click on the um, video part and you'll be hooked in presumably with video and with audio okay with that we'll have the board introduce themselves i'm dave ryer uh chairman tim tim bailey jamie james armstrong al alexander donahue brian i'm brian sullivan and Chris. Chris Murphy. And Shayla. And Shayla Delaney, secretary. Al, you're, you're, you're a little faint there. I don't know if you can turn up your uh, volume or not. Okay, two uh, general things before we start that'll be applicable to all the cases. Uh, I authorize Shayla Delaney, our secretary, to stamp in all documents for all the cases where the board grants relief. And also, I will note that the Board of Health has issued uh, statements, I think, on all the cases, but if not most of them, we're not going to waste time reading them into the record. Um, you folks, you applicants, if you have, if you are granted relief, you need, in some cases, to go deal with the Board of Health to get your building permit. So if you don't have the letters, you should get them to see what the Board of Health is asking of you. And with that, Al, I'll ask you to read in our first case, please. All right, uh, case number 20, 2053. It's Helen Murdoch, trustee through her agent, Susan Ledoux of Eastwood Companies has applied for a variance uh, from the total site coverage requirements of the section 325.52, table three, height and bulk regulations in order to add a pool and patio. The application is accordance with Chapter 48, Section 10, property located 23, Bascom Hollow Map, 97, parcel B2-10, in RR, uh, WR Zoning District. The applicant has uh, withdrawn uh, through her agent, uh, Eastward Company, Susan Ledoux, requesting a... Um, to postpone this this meeting and uh it is being done so without prejudice well yeah actually um they've asked to withdraw not not postpone they had adjourned to this meeting so i'm i don't see any reason not to let them withdraw i mean nothing's happened in the case so i'm going to make a motion that we permit the applicant in case 2020-53 to withdraw without prejudice um, could I have a second? second? Okay, second from, uh, look like Mr. Armstrong may be there. He raised his hand. We'll uh, have voting on this case, Shayla, our five regular members. Uh, Tim Bailey will not vote on this motion. Uh, 
Okay, we have the motion to second any discussion by the board. Now hearing none, I'll call a vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion unanimously passed. This case will be allowed to withdraw without prejudice. Okay, Al, if you could please call our next case. Uh, case number 20, 2021 05, Bill Valeri, Julia Christopher has applied for special permit to build a second story bath addition at the rear of pre existing non conforming single family dwelling. The application is pursuant to the Code of the Town of Howard's 325-54 as set forth in MGL Chapter 48, Section 6. The property is located at 21 Ocean Ave, Map 6B, Parcel L32 in the RH2 Zone District. Okay, on this case, we will have voting um, Al Donahue, Jamie Armstrong, Chris Murphy, Brian Sullivan, and Tim Bailey. I will not vote on the case. And do we have the applicant with us? Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Warren, Julia Christopher. Okay. If you could present your petition to us, please, sir. And Ms. Thank you. Uh, my name is Doug Warren. Here with me is my wife, Julia Christopher. We're the homeowners of 21 Ocean Ave. It's been our family home since 1960. We would like to add a small second floor bathroom over the existing first floor bathroom. This bathroom will not change the existing footprint of the home. We've discussed this project with our media butters. I think in your package there is some letters of, of support. So we're seeking relief uh, for a special permit uh, and we will not uh, be going outside of the footprint of the house. If you have any questions, I'm gladly to answer. Uh, the, uh, from the plans, it looks like the height is going to be right at your roof line, so under 30 feet? Yes, correct. It will be right uh, at uh, right under 30 feet where, uh, with the existing roof line. Okay, and I'm just one more question for me on your plan. I see you have a rinsing station. Is that just like to wash sand off? Right, that's a utility sink, yes. Okay. It almost looks like it goes off your property there. Oh, it's, it, it, you know, we're, we're here in the campground. <laughs> Everything shifted to the right at one point. It's real close. Yeah, your deck looks like it's over too, but that's not an issue tonight. Um, okay, that's all I have. Tim Bailey, any comments or questions? I have no questions. Jamie? No questions, thank you. Al? Uh, no questions, it's the campgrounds. Brian? I have no questions. Chris? I have no questions. Okay, looking at it, as Al says, the campground, so we're going to need our standard, if we grant relief, our standard construction time restriction and then the new general um, condition that the lawyers gave us. Uh, to me, this case meets the uh, requirements of the bylaw and the Gale case. It's going to intensify an existing nonconformity, not create any new nonconformity, and will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's there. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak to this petition? Hearing no one, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. The motion is so moved. Hearing. So moved by Brian. A second, please. Second. Second, Chris Murphy. All in favor of closing the public hearing? One, two, three, four, okay, five, unanimous. The public hearing is now closed. Um, any discussion? Well, um, no, I guess first I'll take a motion. No, we'll have our discussion. Any discussion by the board before we actually make a motion on this? No, then I will accept the motion on this case. Okay, the motion on case number 
202105 Bill Orary, Julia Christopher have applied. Uh, the board authorizes a special uh, permit having found that the applicant meets the requirements of the bylaw and Gale case. Uh, it should be noted that uh, should be not to be referenced. Let's see, as the proposal project will uh, intensify one of the one or more existing nonconformities will not create a new nonconformity and will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structure. All work will be performed in accordance with the plan submitted with this application. The special permit is granted subject to the following conditions. Um, the property is located in a uh, congested area, thus there shall be no demolition, exterior construction, or new landscape during the period from June 30 to Labor Day uh, in any year. Uh, the, if there were sufficient room on this property, which there clearly is not. No, I think you can, you can go right to number three there. Yeah, I am. It is the condition of this approval that the violation of the terms and conditions of this special permit and may be enforced as a violation of the Howard zoning bylaw pursuant to general law chapter 48, section seven and the Howard zoning bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. Thank you. Uh, could we have a second on the motion, please? Second from Jamie Armstrong. Uh, any discussion by the board on this motion? No? Okay, all in favor of granting the special permit? Aye. Aye. Aye, 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 aye. Five uh, unanimous vote. So your special permit is granted. Good luck with your project. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Al, if you could call our next case, please. Case number 2021-06. Kathleen Riley, through her agent, Paul Muldoon, has applied for a special permit to construct a one-story screen porch addition on a pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling. The applicant, the application rally is pursuant to the code of the town of Howard, 325-54 and table two area regulation as set forth at MGL chapter 48, section six. The property is located at two Northern Ave map six parcel E6-59 uh, in an RH-1 zoning district. Okay, thank you. Uh, on this case, we'll have voting Al Donahue, Jamie Armstrong, Chris Murphy, Brian Sullivan, and Tim Bailey. I will not be voting. Okay, do we have the applicant here? Yes, uh, good evening, Chair and, and, and board members. Uh, my name is Paul Muldoon from Muldoon Architects here in Harwardsport, and uh, representing Callie, uh, Kathy Riley on her project at uh, 2 Northern Ave. Um, I'll get right into the uh, presentation here. Uh, the house is at the corner of Hiawatha and Northern Ave. Uh, the house is non-conforming in such that it's it's um, situated at 8.7 feet from the western property line uh, adjacent to Hiawatha, and uh, 25 feet is required at that at that location, and 13.2 feet from the rear uh, property line, uh, where 20 is, is required. Um, our, our project entails a, a one-story screened-in porch. Uh, that will sit 9.5 feet away from the Hiawatha property line and 29 feet from the Northern Ave property line. Um, the the uh, footprint itself is projecting out nine feet from the existing uh, southern elevation and stretching about 26 and uh, 26 foot eight, 26 foot nine. Um, the, uh, the screen porch is centered on the main block of the existing house and, and centered on the, the shed dormer up above. Uh, the nine feet is, is very specifically uh, projecting out to allow a, a couple of chairs, a couple of Adirondack chairs on one side of the, the porch and a small table for a couple of chairs for eating on, on the other side and not much further. 
um, we considered how far it projected out and we looked at sight lines and, and, and uh, driving safety as as you're coming down Hiawatha, there's a uh, the opportunity for a full car length in view before it gets to that um, that intersection with Northern Ave. Uh, the the screen porch will be just a screen porch. There will be no heating system in it. Uh, we'll have screen panels. Uh, the materials itself uh, will have a short uh, shingled wall that matches the shingles, uh, the white cedar shingles on the main house. Um, white trim and, and white soffit rake details will all match the existing uh, house. Um, and the decking material will be uh, one by four mahogany. Um, the, the screen porch itself, I think, uh, works in this neighborhood very well. It, as you travel down uh, Northern Ave, there's a number uh, of screen porches very similar to this. So the, the architecture here is working with the neighborhood and, and really ingratiating itself to the, the architectural fabric of the neighborhood. Um, our lot coverage uh, calculations here, the existing building coverage is 13.9% uh, uh, with an increase of 17.3%, of, uh, still far below the 30% maximum. And our existing site coverage at 26.9% will increase to 30.3%, again, below the 35 foot maximum in this location. Um, we, we feel this, this addition is, is a nice addition to the house. It's positioned in, in the front yard where there's the most area on, on, this, uh, on this property. And um, we feel that it, it, it's um, an improvement to the house and, and uh, fits within the neighborhood. Uh, with that, I'll open it up to your, your questions and comments. Um, yeah, there could be no change to the footprint. It is going out on the northern avenue side, and I guess that's the side it looks like you access it. That's where your driveway is from northern. Correct. Okay. Uh, I have nothing further. Um, Tim? I have no questions. Jamie? No questions. Now? I have no questions. Should be a nice addition to the home. Brian? Uh, no, I agree with Al. Uh, nice addition to the home and in that porch as it extends out, still isn't uh, close to the road than many other houses in the neighborhood. So it, uh, it really isn't uh, intensifying the problem with, with the neighborhood. So we're fine with it. Chris? I have no questions. Okay, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak to this application? Hearing no one, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, so moved. Well, I think Chris moved first and then seconded by Brian. Uh, any discussion on that motion? If not, all those in favor? You could raise your hands for me. Okay, aye. Public hearing is closed. Unanimous vote, Shayla. Um, I think this case clearly meets the Gale, this application clearly meets the Gale case. It's intensifying a pre existing nonconformity, and um, it's not going to be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. I think it will be an improvement and it will uh, be a really nice looking project when completed. We do need those two restrictions. I think the two conditions, again, this is, I don't know if it's technically in the campground, but it's down in that area where it's, everything is pretty, pretty tight down there. So um, that's all I have to say. Uh, any discussion by the other board members? No, here we want none. I'll entertain a motion in the case. Uh, Dave, I thought, Dave, I thought Paul was raising his hand. He had a question. If, if I may, um, our, our property here is situated at such that the, the driveway is allowing for, for three parking spots and, and the ability to do the work in the front yard. And uh, the summertime restriction of the campground restriction, um, we, we could essentially guarantee that all the trucks that would be working on this property for, for this particular project beyond the June 30th deadline would be on the property and not on the street. If, if that is a, a possibility to avoid that, that um, restriction, we'd, we'd be very happy. Um, how long do you think this project's gonna run? six weeks maybe and, and we're, we're going to start it up as soon as we possibly can after this after this hearing because um 
Uh, one consideration, of course, is the parking and the traffic. That's primary, but a secondary consideration is during the summer, people want to be out in the yards and they're not going to want, you know, all the banging, the sewing, the whatever with a project of this size. So I'm not going to vote on the case. I'm going to, you know, let the other board members decide. I, I do appreciate that. And we have, in some instances, allowed um, a project to go forward during the summer where we can get all the vehicles on the um, property and not park on the street. But actually, we had one the last meeting, but that house was a little different. It was kind of away from neighbors and it was not in such a congested area. But I'll leave that up to the board members. So, board members, what do you think? It seems to me that they'd have no problem getting all the vehicles off the road and putting a deck in the relatively should be a straightforward project. Uh, by the time they get into the summer months, it'll be a lot of internal work, I would think. Major extra construction should be done. So I'm okay with the uh, second restriction of just make sure all the vehicles are on the property. Uh, Mr. Muldoon, when do you anticipate beginning your project? As soon as the building permit is, is obtained. Okay. So we, we agree that the vast majority of the actual construction work will be done before June 30th. It might be some painting or some 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 minor trim here and there, but the, the, the deck itself will be built before that deadline. And it's just the ancillary uh, connecting to the house or tri trim work that might um, that might push it through. Okay, but Shayla. But I just say we have our about 30 day period between the time of now we have the right, right. Decision have the appeal and then it goes back to the building department, which is often another three days, just saying. So that would take us like through May. So you'd have like four weeks before June 30. Like tomorrow's April 1st, so, all right, well. In, in which case the, the mobilization of this project uh, to take 60 days, you know, we'd have everything good and ready to go as, as soon as we possibly could uh, to, to, to build the majority of this project through through the month of June. And then again, it might be some painting and some, some ancillary stuff happening after that deadline, but all, all trucks would remain on the property and not on the street, if that was okay with the, the uh, board members. Okay, well, I'm not gonna vote on the case as I said, so. Dude, I agree with Chris on this. However, uh, if we can be assured by Mr. Muldoon that this will be done, because the um, landscape trucks are showing up already. And given the, can, the area that that uh, home is located in, uh, any trucks on the street plus the uh, landscapers would be very difficult for most of the folks who uh, reside in that area trying to get through to their properties. So if we feel comfortable, I would, if, he can, if he can assure us that he can get the trucks into that driveway and not out into the public road, by the date he has suggested, I'd go along with it. I feel very confident that we can do that. <clears throat> okay, so I'll entertain a motion in the case, please. All right, case number 2021 uh, dash, dash uh, 06. Kathleen C. Riley, through her agent, Paul Muldoon, has applied for a special permit to construct a one-story screened-in porch in addition to a pre-existing non-conforming uh, dwelling. The board hereby grants a special permit, having found that the applicant meets the requirements of the bylaw in the Gale case. It should not be uh, as the proposed project will intensify one or more existing nonconformities, will not create any new nonconformity, and will not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structures. All the work shall be performed in accordance with the plan submitted with the application. Um, I won't bother reading into the um, the, the permit here, the uh, issue with regard to the uh, date. So 
Um, having said that, is that sufficient, Mr. Chairman? No, I think we should read in during the life of the project, you know, that bold statement there. All right. The okay, during the life of the project, all construction vehicles will be parked on the property and not on any public street or road. It is a condition of this approval that the violation of the terms and conditions of this special permit and may be enforced as violation of the Howard zoning bylaws pursuant to mass to general law chapter 40A section seven and the Howard zoning board um, bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. Okay, could I have a second on Al's motion please? Second from Chris Murphy. Uh, any discussion by the board? Okay, just so uh, you understand, Mr. Muldoon, um, this is now going to be a condition of the special permit if the board votes in favor of it, which means if your contractors park out there on the street, um, the special permit could be stopped and the job shut down and it's going to be not good. So you do need to sit on the contractors. They very often have minds of their own and we've all used them. So with that, uh, is there any discussion by the board on the motion? And I'll call for a vote on it. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Okay. Unanimously granted. Good luck, Ms. Riley, on your project. And Mr. Muldoon, thank you. For your presentation. You're welcome. Okay, so we can go to case 202107, please, Al. Okay, case 202107, James F. DeVario and Regina DeVario, through their agent, George Avery, have applied for a special permit to expand the size of the front porch on a pre-existing non-conforming single family dwelling. The application is pursuant to the code of the town of Howard's 325-54 and table two area regulation as set forth in MGL uh, chapter 48, section six. The property is located at 14 Union Street, map 6B parcel L102 in the RH, RH2 zoning district. Okay, thanks, Al. Voting on this case will be Al Donahue, Jamie Armstrong, Chris Murphy, Brian Sullivan, and Tim Bailey. I will not vote on this case. Um, I'm gonna ask the applicant to present their petition, please. Hi, my name is George Avery, and I'm, I'm talking for Jim and Regina DeVerio. They have an existing porch, approximately six by eight. If you come out of the, off the porch, there's two steps down, and that is where it ends, approximately three feet from the road. We want to go to the left of that, another 12 to 14 feet, just to make the deck or the porch longer and take the front steps off of the front and put them on the side into the driveway. Okay. And that's it? Uh, yes, that's it. Okay. So the existing deck is one and a half feet from Union Street. Yes, sir. When you take off the front step, it's gonna push it back to 2.2 feet. Yes. Okay, and no other changes to the property in connection with this project? No, sir. Just adding this covered porch, that's it. Okay, uh, I have no uh, further questions, Tim. I have no questions. Al? I just wanna let Mr. Avery be aware that the, uh, we received a letter uh, from Health and their only concern was that the porch would not uh, over cover over or touch any portion of the septic system. No, sir. On the property. The septic's on the other side. That. The septic's on the driveway side. 
I have nothing further. Jamie? I have no questions, thank you. Chris? I have no questions. Brian? I, I guess my only question is, until the steps are being done, so it's actually not extending out of the driveway, so you still have full access to bring a car in the driveway, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, the steps basically end where the railing is. I see. All right, so you're going to... Oh, thank you. No other questions. Okay. Uh, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak to this application? No, hearing no one, I'll move to close, uh, take a motion to uh, close the public hearing, please. So moved. Um, Mr. Armstrong moved and Mr. Sullivan seconded. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Brian, aye. Okay. Public hearing is closed. Uh, any discussion by the board on this project? I think we need the two conditions. That's down in the area where everything is pretty tight down there. I mean, even yesterday going around, as Al said, with a couple of uh, landscapers, it's tough sledding down there. I was, the I, think, I was not able to get down the street. I had to actually turn around when I was trying to use the property, so. Yeah, I mean, it's a great neighborhood, but not for driving. <laughs> I can't imagine what it's like during the summertime. I never would venture down there. Okay, um, I'll entertain a motion in the case. I th Well, uh, let me just before we uh, do that, I think the case meets the bylaw and the Gale case. It's an intensification of a pre-existing nonconformity. Uh, certainly this little addition is not gonna be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what already exists. So with that, I will entertain a motion in this case. Case number 2021-07. James F. DeVario and Regina DeVario through their agent. George Avery have applied for special permit to expand the portion in front of pre existing non conforming family dwelling. The board hereby grants special permit, having found that the applicant meets the requirements of the bylaw in the Gale case. As the proposed project will intensify one or more of the existing non-conformities and will not create any new non-conformity and will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structures. All work will be performed in accordance with the plans submitted with the applicant application. The special permit is granted subject to the following conditions. There shall be no demolition, exterior construction, or new landscaping during the period of June 30 to Labor Day of any year. During the life of the project, uh, during the life of the project, all construction vehicles shall be parked on the property and not on the public street or road. Now, wait a minute, Al, that won't apply here. He doesn't, they don't have that kind of room there. I think number one, the uh, restriction of the June 30 to Labor Day will take care of that. Okay. It is a condition of this approval that the violation of the terms and conditions of this special permit and may be enforced as a violation of the Howard Zoning Bylaw pursuant to the General Law, Chapter 48, Section 6, and the Howard Zoning Bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. Okay, could I have a second on Al's motion, please? Second from Chris Murphy. Uh, any discussion by the board? All in favor of this motion? You can signify. All right, five hands, it's unanimous. Special permit is granted, folks. So uh, good luck with your project. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I ask one question? Yes. It's, it's Jim DeBirio. I was just curious about the, it takes 30 days now to get the permit. <clears throat> is that what, what the time frame would be? So we would have May and June to get this done? It, it's it's about 30 days from now. I, I have 14 days to okay. write a decision. Once the decision is filed with the clerk, it has to sit for 20 days. 
and then you can get an attested copy of the decision, uh, get it stamped at the Registry of Deeds, and then you come back and reapply for the building permit, and that can be up to 30 days. Okay, so we, we would have to get this done in the month of June, it sounds like, at the worst, I guess, right? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, case 2021-08, please, Al. All right. Uh, Avia Verma, trustee through his agent, attorney William Kroll, has applied for a special permit or any alternative, a variance to create a finished habitable space in the basement of a pre-existing non-conforming single family dwelling. The application pursuant to the Code of Town of Howard Street 2554, Table 2, area regulation is set forth in MGL Chapter 48, Section 6, or Chapter 48, Section 10. The property is located 5 Lake Yard Road, Map 7, Parcel A43, and RH1 Zoning District. And if you want to correct me, you may on the pronunciation. Okay, um, Attorney Kroll will have voting on this case. Mr. Donahue, Mr. Armstrong, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Sullivan, and Mr. Bailey, I will not be voting. Okay, Attorney Kroll, where are, there you are. Sorry, the little, the little icons keep moving every time somebody comes or goes. Kind of like Hollywood Squares. Um, yes, I guess, yeah. Attorney William Kroll from Harwichport, and I'm representing this evening Pallavi Burma, uh, who is located the lower left uh, of your screen. Um, hi, Pallavi. Uh, this property is, Mr. Donahue who read, is on Flake Yard Road. It uh, should be a very straightforward case because um, she is only seeking to convert the basement to habitable space. The existing single family residence is non-conforming with regard to pre-existing non-conforming with regard to all the setbacks. Um, and in accordance with the Gale case, um, she would be intensifying the existing non-conformities by creating habitable space in the basement. There is habitable space certainly in the first floor and second floor, um, and she would be converting the basement area to a bathroom, an exercise room, sauna, TV room, and closet, which would uh, be an intensification of that existing nonconformity. And under the terms of the Gale case, this board could grant a special permit um, if it finds that, that intensification, that uh, renovation of the basement would not constitute a substantial detriment to the entire neighborhood and would argue that it does not. Um, we would ask that the board grant the special permit this evening. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at your proposed plot plan and there, it's a plan from way back in 2017 and there yes. are other improvements noted on there, removing a building section, proposed steps, proposed deck over porch, proposed porch. Have those been done? Those were all done, Mr. Chairman, pursuant to uh, the, the previous owner um, did all of that uh, pursuant to a special permit from this board that I obtained back in uh, 07, I believe. That work's all been done. The house looks great. And now she bought, uh, my client bought it um, several months ago, and now she wants to convert the uh, basement. Okay. Uh, I have no further questions. Tim? I have no questions. Al? No questions. Jamie? No questions. Chris? No questions. Brian? No questions. Is there anyone in the public that would like to address this petition? Hearing no one, I'll accept the motion to close the public hearing. Who is that? Mr. Mr. Kroll. Yeah, Kroll. Before you do that, um, I just wanted to point out that uh, the Easterly of Butter, Mr. and Mrs. Higdon, Higdon, did contact me and they submitted a letter to you 
that says they're in support of the project. They just have concerns about the contractors and so forth. And my client has no issue with um, park, having all the parking on site. Um, there's not going to be any exterior. There's no demolition. There's no exterior construction. Um, and uh, no landscaping. It's all going to be in the basement. And she can park uh, the construction vehicles uh, on her lot and abide by her neighbor's concerns. So she certainly wants to be a good neighbor and they have no issue with the project. They submitted a letter, but you read the letter. Basically, it, it says it, it addresses their concerns about parking and she will make sure they all park on the property. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, I was going to put in the demolition time period, you know, our, but as long as in this case, everything's inside and it's on the property. Um, the, the parking's all on the property. I think it's reasonable if uh, we we simply make that a condition that everything's going to be parked, all the construction vehicles on site and nothing on a public street or road. Um, That's fine. Thank you. So I'm still waiting for a motion to close the public hearing, I believe. Don't move. So moved. Who did it? Who said that? Chris or Al? Okay, Al. Chris seconded it. So public hearing. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing. Okay, unanimous. Public hearing is now closed. Uh, I think this project meets the bylaw and the requirements of the Gale case. It's all inside interior. Um, I'm not going to have any substantial impact on the neighborhood. The neighbors aren't going to see it. It's all uh, down in the basement, basement conversion. So with that, I will ask for a motion on the case, please. Uh, case number 2021-08. Grandma Palva, trustee through her agent attorney, William Crow, has applied for special permit. On the alternative of areas to create a, a finished habitable, habitable space in the basement of pre existing non conforming family dwelling. The board hereby grants a special permit, having found that the applicant meets the requirements of the bylaw and the Gale case. As is proposed, the project will intensify uh, one or more existing non conformities and will not create any new non conformity and will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structures. All work will be performed in accordance with the term of the plan submitted with the application. The, uh, during the special permit grant is subject to the following condition. During the life of the project, all construction vehicles shall be parked on the property and not on a public, right, uh, not the public road or street. Uh, it is a condition of this approval that the violation of the terms and conditions of the special permit and may be enforced as a violation of the Howard zoning bylaw pursuant to general law chapter 48 section 7 and the Howard zoning bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. Could I have a uh, second on Al's motion, please? Okay, Tim. Second of the motion. Uh, discussion by the board on the motion. Brian. Yeah, it did occur to me, particularly in some of these uh, locations, when we say that they can't park construction vehicles, we also be referring to the fact that we can't be parking the personal vehicles as well on the street just to make room for the construction vehicles. I, I'm sorry, I missed that. Say that again. Should we be including the fact that that the owners can't be parking their cars in the street, construction vehicles parked in the, in the driveway. That, that during the construction, both personal and constructing construction vehicles be on site. Um, I, don't, I don't have any problem uh, if Al wants to uh, amend the motion to include that, to change that condition. Um, well, this 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 rule uh, covers construction vehicles. We have not used. We've never questioned the primary owner's motor vehicles before. 
Okay. Yeah. I, I guess my feeling would be that, um, you know, if people want to park their primary vehicle or, or their vehicles, personal vehicles on the street, they can do that before they came before us in a special permit. And I think what we really want to uh, be concerned about is the added burden on the streets from the construction project that's before us. Now, I don't, I don't know if there's any parking down there allowed on the street. I don't know what the rules are down there. I um, would think during the summertime, if people park on the street, there will be complaints about that because they're just, you know, you guys have been down there. There's no room to move down there. But I'm, you know, I don't feel strongly about it, but I, okay. it, seems, it, seems a little, it seems a little unfair to me. I don't know. I don't know. Anybody else? Any any thoughts on it? I would agree, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it's I only have one. That should there, should there be if there were to be complaints by the neighbors, the police department would be notified and would be up to them to rectify that problem. Exactly. Private motor vehicles. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. So, Shayla, did uh, Chris second that motion? I don't remember. I, I didn't. I did. Okay, we, uh, Chris, you want to second your motion? Second. Was, yeah, Jim seconded, didn't he? Okay. Jim Bailey seconded it. Okay, I'm sorry. Jim seconded it. Okay, sorry. Got off track there with the discussion. Um, any further discussion on the motion itself? All in favor of the motion? I, 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 I am a special permit unanimously granted motion passed. So good luck, Ms. Verma, with your project. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome, Attorney Crowell. Okay. Uh, Our next case. Uh, case number 20, uh, 2021-09. <clears throat> Kevin M. and Nancy S. Haley, through their agent, Attorney William Pro, have applied for a special permit or an alternative of variance to renovate a pre existing non conforming cottage in order to add a fourth bedroom and to convert a garage to a kitchen slash dining room, as well as special permit to replace and add existing retaining wall. The applicant is pursuant to the code of the town of Harris 32554, table two, area regulation is set forth in MGL chapter 48, section six, or chapter 48, section 10. The property is located at 22 Quassant Lane, map seven, parcel B7, also known as 19 Pine Street <clears throat> in the RH1 zoning district. Okay, I guess on this case, we'll have voting Mr. Donahue, um, Mr. Armstrong, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Sullivan, and Mr. Bailey. I, I guess I won't vote on this one. Okay, Attorney Kroll, if you would like to present your application, please. Okay, you, uh, you're mute, muted there, Attorney Kroll. That's the way most people prefer it, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, you're giving us a silent treatment there. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much. Um, I'm Attorney William Kroll uh, from Howard Court, and I'm representing this evening Kevin and Nancy Hurley. Um, I believe that Ms. Hurley or Mr. Hurley is on at least on the phone with us. Um, they may be traveling. In any event, uh, this property is on Crossing Lane as-, as Okay, wait a, minute, let me, wait a minute, let me interrupt you just for one second, I'm sorry. Is it Haley or Hurley? It is. The agenda says Haley. That's correct. And I saw Mary Hurley on there and that's what uh, threw me off and I apologize. Okay, no problem. I just wanted to clarify that. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. Yeah. Kevin and Nancy Haley are my clients who own the property on, on um, 22 Quasson Lane. So 
sorry to confuse the board. Um, the what they're seeking to do, and this takes a little bit of an explanation, um, so bear with me. I'll, I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, you see that there are two existing residences on the plot plan. Uh, there's an existing main house. We're not doing anything to that. Uh, there's the existing cottage, and it is an existing cottage. When you look at the floor plans that we submitted, the existing floor plans, it has the cottage has in it um, a kitchen, dining area, bathroom, three bedrooms on the second floor. It's been rented as a cottage in the summer by the previous owner. My clients just acquired it last fall, but it's been rented by the previous owner for approximately 50 to 60 years as a separate residence cottage um, on, on the property. So we have two single family residences on, on the property. We're just seeking a special permit for the cottage uh, this evening. Um, so the cottage has on the northerly side of it, it has an existing garage area. And what they want to do is expand the habitable space into the existing garage area to, um, and add a fourth bedroom to the second floor. They're not changing the footprint at all um, of the cottage. They're simply expanding the ha habitable space and adding a fourth bedroom. Uh, the Board of Health has already approved the fourth bedroom. Um, so they're well aware of the, the three bedrooms already existing and uh, they've met the requirements. Uh, Moran Engineering is handling that part of it. Uh, So this is a, uh, a Gale case situation because we're too close uh, to the lot lines as indicated in the um, petition that I submitted, but we're not changing the footprint whatsoever. So the, the setbacks are simply less than the required 20 feet or 25 feet, um, but we're seeking a special permit to expand the habitable space into the, the uh, a portion of the cottage that is currently a garage. Now, with the petition, we also requested um, relief to install, construct additional retaining walls. We don't want to do that anymore. Um, so we're not asking for a special permit or any relief concerning the retaining walls shown on the proposed exist uh, conditions plan. It turned out to be impractical and too expensive, so that they're not going to do that. And they're actually going to remove the existing retaining walls. So we're not asking for any relief regarding the retaining walls. As a matter of fact, uh, we had Dan Croto of Moran Engineering make a calculation for us, and by reducing or not, uh, but by not adding to the retaining walls and and and. Uh, taking out the existing retaining walls and just uh, grading the property better um, would reduce the square footage of coverage, the site coverage by 348 square feet and would reduce the uh, site coverage down to 55.9%. 50, we are currently at 55.3. It would reduce it down to 55.9. Um, so we're not asking for any relief re regarding the retaining walls. However, uh, you'll see on the proposed conditions plan, um, the lower in the middle of the plan down towards the bottom, it says proposed shed eight by 12 feet. Um, that's part of the, uh, uh, the site coverage. My clients have decided they would like to have a second shed due north of that at the at the corner um north the northerly corner uh, uh, above the existing house on the plan to the right in that corner for another eight by 12 shed that would add another 96 square feet and taking out the retaining walls so reducing by 348 square feet to, so to make it simple I thought that if the board could see fit to authorize um, a second eight by 12 ship bed, we have to meet setback requirements. We have to get a building permit for it anyway. But if you simply said 
just making a suggestion on site coverage that I made a calculation that that would increase the site coverage minimally with the second shed to 56.65. And I thought if the board simply said, you can have a second shed as long as the site coverage does not exceed 57, 57%, then we wouldn't have to um, get too refined about what the site coverage is going to be. Um, you see on the proposed conditions plan, we were going to ask for 58.8. .8. Then it dropped down without the retaining walls. It dropped down to 55.9. We'd like to go to 57 so we could have a second shed. Um, so I think we meet the requirements of the Gale case with regard to the expansion of the, the habitable space in the interior of the cottage. The building coverage all remains the same. The patios on the proposed conditions plan uh, have expanded a little bit. They're all built into that site coverage uh, figure that I gave you. Um, so we would ask that the board um, in its decision say that the, there will be no new retaining walls and that we'll remove the existing retaining walls and that we could have a second shed eight by 12 as long as the total site coverage does not exceed 57 percent which would only be a basically 1.7 percent increase over the existing non-conforming site coverage so in another gale case intensification of an existing non-conformity because the site coverage max is 35% and we're at 55.3, but just increasing it slightly. And if we do all of that, then our argument is that um, we would not constitute a substantial detriment to the entire neighborhood, We're just increasing the habitable space in the cottage and putting a fourth bedroom on the second floor. Thank you. And what's the max site coverage under your various proposals here? What's the final? Uh, the, max, the max site coverage under the bylaw is 35%. So we're no, but under under the retaining walls out, the yeah. shed in. Right. Five seven. Fifty seven. Yes. Percent. Yes. Okay. Okay, well, I'm not going to vote on this case, but I think the members that are voting might want to consider continuing and getting uh, an updated site plan. I feel a little queasy if I were voting, voting on this site plan because the shed isn't there. Uh, we don't know where it's going to be located. The retaining walls are showing. I, I don't know. That's my two cents on it. But on another. Yes, if I may. The shed, if the shed is going to cause a lot of second shed is going to cause a lot of confusion and a continuance will withdraw that request and just go with what we've presented. And um, I have a calculation from in writing from Mr. Croto at um, Marine Engineering that says that uh, if we don't build the retaining walls, it would reduce the square footage by 348 square feet and would reduce the site coverage to 55.9. So if you want to uh, abandon the shed and just go with that, um, we would rather do that than have a continuance. Well, aren't you going to have to file a new plan anyway to get a building permit to, to get rid I, I of the I don't see why, because the building permit, uh, we, we're not asking to build the retaining walls. So the building permit request stays the same for the cottage. That's it. Well, except that we're going to stamp in this plan, which shows the retaining walls on it. With a decision that says that the petitioner has indicated that he will not be building the retaining walls as shown in the plan. I think that's pretty straightforward. Well, I'm not going to vote on it. As I said, I'm going to let the other board members decide on that one. Okay. Um, 
separate question what what is the cottage uh, you can't have two residences on the same piece of property so is it an accessory apartment what what is it under the bylaw it, it predates zoning mr chairman right but now you're asking now you're asking for relief so it's got to be identified in my mind there are two there are two residences on that lot that was my point at the beginning it's been there the previous owners has rented it as such for the for 60 years or more and it's been in that family um it does constitute in my opinion um two residences on the lot it has a kitchen it has three bedrooms it has uh septic system it has a dining room um it's a residence it's been rented as a residence There's a lot of these in town where you have uh, a guest house type cottage um i know well, that you can't build new and have two residences on one lot but you can predate zoning predate zoning's prohibition uh, of having it and that's that's what exists on this property well i guess yeah if you weren't changing it it would clearly be grandfather but now you're asking for zoning relief and it just seems to me you're going to lose your grandfathering how so I, I, don't, I don't follow because we already have the, the 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 all of that is already in the cottage and we're simply expanding the that use that right to use into the garage area which is what gail allows us to do well you need a special permit to do it but the structure the garage structure of the house that perimeter already exists no i understand that all the time it, it just seems to me that by uh, asking for the special permit you're going to lose the grandfathering as a residence and it's going to have to either be an accessory apartment or something else because you've got the principal residence as the existing house and we have a we have an accessory guest house if you want to call it that a secondary guest house that is a, a second residence i don't see why we're losing any grandfather protection we're, we're just increasing the habitable space within that existing structure well i guess what i'm coming to finally is um are you really going to qualify for a special permit or does it have to go forward as a variance petition i i don't think that i don't think that we do for all the reasons i've already stated because of the it, it, pre-existing use of the property as a single family residence that's been rented for over 60 years um, by the previous owner as a separate habitable residence. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna vote on the case. I'm not necessarily convinced by that, but I'll pass over to uh, Tim Bailey. Questions, comments, Tim? I have no questions. Al? I'm a little confused on the cottage. That driveway, the wall, the wall is crumbling in the driveway of the cottage. You're referring to the cottage as being that low, that small ranch. The, the cottage exists on the, on the lot on the Pine Avenue side. Yes. as shown on the plan okay um well, when i was looking at number 22 Quasson, i thought that i was looking at a a ranch with a driveway and a wall which was deteriorating falling into that driveway you're talking about a retaining wall mr donahue or it was a it was a retaining wall okay all right, that, that's part of what's going to be re regraded. Re yes. Okay. Coming in from Quasson, yes. And if I got the right property, the back of that property, that driveway, there's a uh, work being done in the home directly behind it. And they're using the driveway to put that, their uh, uh, container in. I just want to make sure I'm looking at the proper property over there because the main house 
as I was looking at it, has a garage to the right. Am I correct? I don't believe so. Okay. When you're looking at the plan, it's not showing a garage coming in from Crossing Lane. It's a long driveway. Okay. All right. With a walkway there, with the um, proposed walkway in from the driveway into the existing home. All right. I have no further questions. Jamie? <clears throat> Uh, I'm a little confused about the status of the Cobb II. Does it, when they apply for this, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you're suggesting that it, you have to look at it as a, a new building. It doesn't fall within the grandfathery. Well, that's my concern. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's grandfathered as whatever it is, you know, uh, I guess some kind of a residence, but I thought, and I thought Attorney Crowell told us this the last meeting, when you are going to do any kind of work, you're going to lose the grandfathering. Oh, yeah. That's where they've got to come in for a special permit. Yeah. That, 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 let me clarify that when I can, if that's all right. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Last meeting, we were talking about lot lines, not about houses. If you change your lot line on a pre-existing non-conforming grandfathered lot, you lose your grandfathered status. Okay, you're right. I stand corrected. You're right. It was the lot line. Thank you. So we're just, we're not in, in, in this case, I mean, with the Gale cases that you folks handle, we change, we expand houses all the time. You don't lose your grandfathered status. Here, we're not even expanding. All we're doing is expanding the interior habitable space area. But in my opinion, we don't lose any grandfathered status that this cottage already has. We've got two residences on one lot. Well, that's my concern, not the expansion, that we've got two residences on one lot. Um, uh, go ahead, Jenny. I don't see how the change, I don't see how the change how the expansion changes that grandfathered zoning status as a resident. We're just making more habitable space to the existing residents. Again, we do that all the time with Gale Casey. Yes, I, I'm willing to support it with the uh, second shed uh, forgotten. Okay, Chris. You know, good discussion on that cottage. I was a little concerned until that was clarified. Uh, and uh, as uh, as Jamie mentioned, uh, the shed uh, would have put the increase in the site coverage uh, again pretty high. It was already high at fifty eight point eight. Uh, removing the retaining walls, no second shed, a modest increase in the site coverage, half a percent. Uh, so I have no problem. Uh, no questions. Okay, thanks. Uh, Brian. Since uh, 19 Pine is a separate residence, and you have you know, the two residences in one lot, I'm assuming it can't be sold separately. Is that correct? Correct. You cannot. You can't subdivide the lot. Okay. Now, regarding the regarding the shed, I, I feel the fact that uh, I, I didn't quite catch what Chris said. If he's in agreement of allowing the shed to be put on, I'd rather see the, our approval be based upon a, a shed on, on on the on the site plan drawn in. Um, we abandoned that, Mr. Sullivan. We said it said not a problem. Yeah, I. I uh, I, I I did not agree with the second shed that's been removed. Okay. All right, I'll I'll find. You mentioned that when the retaining wall comes out, that's going to be regraded in the front on yes. twenty two. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, but the the shed shown on the plan, you still want right to propose eight by twelve. Yes, that's on the plan and that's already in the calculation of the site coverage. Okay. 
Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak to this application? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, my, name, my name is Bill Hurley. You may see me as Mary Hurley. That's my wife, but uh, my name is Bill and I live at 20 Poisson. Okay. I, I have a question for attorney Crawl. two questions uh, about the retaining walls. Um, the walls are in, uh, um, at the moment a great disrepair. There's been some tree work that's been done recently uh, on the site, which I think have damaged the wall. So do I have it, uh, my understanding correct that both retaining walls on either side of the driveway will be removed? That's my understanding and the property will be regraded. They may, they may keep some of those retaining walls um, uh, as, as curbing, but not as a retaining wall. Okay, thank you. And the second question, I apologize, I do not have a copy of the, of the plan. Could you describe for me, please, where the shed will be located? Certainly. Um, you're at 20 Quasson, which is when you're facing their driveway from Quasson, is that to the left or to the yes, right? Yes, it is, to the left. Okay, so that shed would be to the rear of your lot at the corner of the juncture of their lot and your lot. And oh, where, it, Mr. where Mr. Fisher used to keep his boat. I, I don't know, but it's it's a, a uh, the shed is showing yeah. as an eight, 12, shed less than 100 square feet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurley. Um, anyone else in the public want to comment on this petition? Hearing no one, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved by Chris Murphy, seconded by Jamie Armstrong. Any discussion on that motion? I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye, 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 aye. Okay, unanimously passed. Um, discussion of the case. Are you guys comfortable going forward with this site plan that shows the retaining walls? I mean, we've had a lot of discussion about that. I had one question. Uh, part of the discussion was the retaining walls would be removed. And now I just heard that the retaining walls might not be removed. Well, that's why I think we need a new plan. But again, that's your up to you folks, your five. Yeah, the, the walls will be re re replaced by curbing and not retaining walls. Mr. Chairman, I believe that was Mr. Mr. Haley. Okay. That he was calling in. So he was saying they're going to be replaced by curbing and not by retaining walls. Well, could we not put a statement uh, that says that uh, as a part of the condition that the retaining existing retaining walls uh, are removed? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, yeah, we can, but again, I mean, you're not gonna know where they're going because they're not showing on the plan. Well, they're going away. Right. Well, the curbings, what is it, you put your curbing in on the plan if you're gonna add curbing? No. No, if you look at the existing conditions plan that was submitted. Right? Yep. Those walls already exist. I understand that, right. But you so, said they're now going away. It would be brought down to grade as a curb and not as a retaining wall. But they already exist. 
So it's not, it's not like we have to show something different. They already exist. I don't know what a new plan would show, any different from what the existing conditions plan shows. It's not going to put in new retaining walls, the new ones, which are the sort of uh, parking space like walls that we had in the driveway area on the proposed condition plan, those are not going to be installed. So the retaining walls, retaining walls would act as curbs, grade level, and then there would be new grading that in my client's estimation would be better than having retaining walls. It's more of a landscaping um, feature than any of them as zoning feature. We're not building anything new. If we're building a new retaining wall, we'd have to have your permission to do that. We're not building anything new. They already exist. Yeah, our, our neighbor was correct in stating that they're in a kind of unsightly, they're crumbling. So it's it would look a lot nicer to take them down and regrade and just and and, and make it look nice. I mean that, that that's what we're trying to do. That's Mr. One Haley. Question. Go ahead, Brian. One question I have is that in in showing the square footage for the the shed, as far as you know, you show the fact that the shed won't be any more square footage than than to get rid of the retaining walls. But if the thing's regraded in the same size wall or permit is used. Are we not really not accomplishing uh, eliminating script coverage, or is it fine to find? We're saying, well, the, if I may, Mr. Chairman, the first shed is already shown on the plan, and that's already part of the site coverage calculation. That I understand. All right, so we've abandoned the second shed idea, so that's out. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. We've abandoned the new retaining walls, so those are out. So we're actually reducing what was the site coverage shown on the proposed condition plan was 58.8, .8, and we're reducing it to to um, 55.9, which is only half a percent. I understand. More than what exists. Thank you. What, what is the depth of those retaining walls? It doesn't look like they're they're just on top of the ground, aren't they? Mr. Haley, can you address that? Um, yeah, right now that's about maybe a foot. That, that's why, I mean, when we got the cost to do it, it was just unbelievably expensive to build these really long 90 sure. foot on either side, one foot high retaining walls. So, um, yeah, that's currently what it is. One side is about a foot and then the other side is about, is about the same, about a foot, foot and a half. I mean, it looks like curbing that was trying to be used as retaining wall. That was my opinion. Mr. Chair, may I speak to that? Who, who is that? Uh, a neighbor, Curly, next door neighbor. Okay. okay. I, I'm, I'm not at the property at the moment, but my recollection is that those retaining walls are much higher than a foot and a half. On one side, it's about a foot and a half. And then the other side, it's it's about the same. Are you there now, sir? Am I at the house right now? No, I, I was there. I I was there earlier today. Well, my recollection uh, is the slope, the slope uh, from my property down to the grade is uh, quite significant, more, more than a foot and a half, but 
Um, I, I apologize for not being at the property at the moment. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I think, you know, what, whatever it is, it's going to be, it, it's, it, the curbing is going to be nicely done. I mean, it's going to be a, you know, a, a fine transition from the you know, driveway to the, you know, the property boundary. Um, No, I, I understand that, but these these retaining walls currently uh, serve a purpose to retain the property from falling into your driveway. If I may, Mr. Right. Chair, if I may, the, the, yes. um, the retaining walls that are there already exist and they don't need any relief from this board. He could just leave the retaining walls the way they are. The board doesn't have, have to grant him any relief to do that. So if he had never come up with the idea of new retaining walls, the proposed conditions plan would just show the existing retaining walls and he would not be asking for any relief from this board. He'd just be asking for relief about the cottage. I think that's the only issue before the board. Excellent point. Okay, voting members. I will entertain a motion in this case, if you are ready. All right. Case number 2021-09, Kevin M. and Nancy S. Furley through their agents. Wait, wait, Haley, Haley. Haley, what did I say? Furley. Furley is the neighbor, Haley. <laughs> the neighbor, okay. We'll try this again, Kevin M. and Nancy S. Haley through their attorney, William, uh, William Crow, have applied for a special permit or in the alternative of variance to renovate a pre-existing non-conforming cottage in order to add a fourth bedroom and to convert a garage uh, into a kitchen slash dining room. The application is pursuant to the code of the town of Howard's 325-54 Area regulation set forth in the NGL chapter 40A, uh, section six, uh, it's just a chapter 48, or, set, yeah, or chapter 40A, section 10. The property is located at 22 Quasin Lane, map seven, parcel B7, AKA also known as 19 Pine Street in the RH1 zoning district. Now, the by issuing a special permit, though the site uh, there will be no. Well, you gotta you gotta make the motion first, Dale, that, that we grant them a special permit. Okay. Item B there on our form. Right. All right. So, um, during the uh, life of no uh, up above, the yeah. special permit is is subject to the following conditions. Now, first, you got to go up and move to grant it up and be there. I missed that all together, didn't I? Kevin M. and Nancy S. Haley, through their agent, William Crowell, have applied for a special permit. The board hereby grants a special permit, having found that the applicant meets the requirements of the bylaws and the Gale case. As is proposed, the project will intensify one or more existing nonconformities will not create any new nonconformities and will be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structures. All work will be performed in accordance with the plans submitted with this application. During the life of this, uh, 
that's a fairly congested street in the summertime, so this yeah. should not really be affected. So during the life of the project, all construction vehicles shall be parked on the property and on, on the public's road. It is a condition of this approval that the violation of the terms of this con of conditions, the special permit, and may be enforced as a violation of the Howard's zoning bylaw pursuant to general law chapter 48, section seven, the Howard zoning board, as these may be amended time to time. I think you also need to have a condition that the um, retaining walls shown on the plan will not be constructed. Okay. okay. Right. I, I mean, there needs to be like a little clarification on that because the uh, it's the it's not, it's the retaining walls. There is a, re, a retaining wall. Um, near the corner of the house like 90 percent of the walls are it, that that is actually going to be um it, it's existing <laughs> there's a there's a retaining wall that's existing i don't that is kind of at the corner of the house where uh between it and uh um yeah you know, the bottom you know in between the pine street house that will remain otherwise yeah, all the other retaining walls will go away or become curving. I think you just need a statement, Al, as a further condition that all the proposed retaining walls shown on the proposed condition site plan dated 216, 2021, uh, prepared by Moran Engineering will not be constructed and are not approved by the board. All right, I'll second that. Okay. Um, as amended, <laughs> can we have a second on Al's motion as he amended it? Actually, yes, yeah, second, second Al's motion as he amended it. Okay. Any discussion by the board? And I think um, even though it shows on the plan proposed site coverage of 58.8, we don't really need to note that it's 55.9 in the decision, I don't believe, in the motion, because once you take out the re proposed retaining walls, that's the number that you're going to arrive at. So I think that's okay. So. Um, I'll call for a vote on the motion. If there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye, 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 aye. Okay, unanimous. Special permit is granted, Attorney Crowell. Who do I ask who the second was on the motion? Chris Murphy, I believe. Wasn't it Chris? Yeah, I didn't hear that. What was that? Did you second? You seconded Al's motion, wasn't it you? I did, yes. Yeah, there was I Chris. Thank you very much. Much board for all of your consideration on this. Okay, after that marathon session, we move on to case 2021 10. All uh, right, case number 2021 10. Anthony W. Uh, Potts, through his agent William uh, Crow, has applied for a change in a variance granted by the board in case number. 2009-24 in order to add a bedroom above a pre-existing non-conforming attached garage as well as a variance for the existing landscape well uh, walls bordering the drive in the alternative the application requests a special permit the applicant is pursuant application pursuant to the requirements mgl chapter 40 a section 10 the property is located at 97 great western road map 45 parcel x 18 in the rr zoning district okay on this case we'll have voting al donahue jamie armstrong chris murphy brian uh, tim bailey will not vote on this case all right, Attorney Kroll, if you could identify yourself for the record one more time, please, and then present your petition. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's Attorney William Kroll from Howard's Port representing uh, Anthony Pat. 
Stony Pat, who you can see on your screen now, um, who's the homeowner. And the builder is Encore Construction from Dennisport. And Kathy DeMeyer is the um, on your screen also as the representative of and general manager of uh, Encore Construction. Um, this property is at the corner of Great Western Road and Herring Run Road. A lot of activity lately on Herring Run Road. Um, we had one last week on that. Uh, the plot plan that was submitted is uh, dated February 23, 2021 by J.M. O'Reilly uh, um, and Associates. And it shows the existing garage um, and this property was the subject 10 years ago and of uh, a variance from this board. And Mr. Weyer, I believe you were on the board at that time. Uh, I was, I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> I don't remember what I had for breakfast, come on. <laughs> so, uh, no, you weren't. You were not. It was a different matter. Uh, the, no, I think I was. I think I was on the board. I did not vote on this case. I think it said. All right. I think I was present, but not voting. I was an alternate back in those days. So, Mr. Pats, who yeah. was a uh, career had a career with EverSource, um, the electric company, now retired, and he has family living with him and has found that the, the kitchen is too small in the in the house and he needs to expand that kitchen uh it's very narrow oh, wait a minute hold on that's me let me sorry <laughs> Sorry, um, it was a robocall. <laughs> so, as I was saying, Mr. Patz has found that this narrow kitchen is just too small for for him and his family members, um, and he needs to expand it. And he would uh, be, according to the plans, he'll be removing one bedroom by expanding the kitchen. He'd be re removing one bedroom and putting it above the garage. Um, the house would remain a three bedroom house. It's currently three bedrooms. He'd be removing one bedroom from the main part of the house and putting uh, the bedroom above the garage. There'd be no change to the footprint of the house or the garage. So he got a variance from this board 10 years ago to build the garage. Um, why did he need the variance? Because as you can see from the plot plan, the garage is 20.2 feet from the lot line of Herring Run Road. It's actually four or five more feet before you get to the pavement beyond that, but he's 20.2 feet. Um, the board granted the variance because he has, um, he, he had to have a larger a garage at the time uh, um, because he has a large pickup truck. And so the board saw fit to grant the variance due to the unique shape, size, and topography of the lot. Um, and the engineer, uh, John O'Reilly, submitted a letter to the board back then to ex explaining how the lot drops off. When you drive in from Great Western Road down Herring Run Road, it, his lot drops off significantly in the back and that's where the septic system would be going. Um, and if he, if the board back then had said, well, put the garage down further down, back in the lot, it would be, it, it would create a lot of um, topographical issues and, and uh, it would have had to fill the lot, it would require extensive grading and so forth. Um, so the decision was made that 
because that's the only place you could realistically put the septic system um, that the garage had to be connected to the house there and be a little bit closer to the lot line than um, is the norm because you're supposed to be 25 feet back. So the board made a finding of hardship um, at that time and granted him a variance. I submitted with your packet a copy of the decision. Um, the board in granting the variance uh, imposed the condition on the garage and they said that they granted the variance on the condition that the second floor would be used for storage only. So that's why we're here tonight. Um, I, at the time, I could not understand the reason for granting that condition um, or imposing that condition because either have, either build the structure 20.2 feet from the street or you don't. I don't see what the, what purpose the condition served of, of what difference does it make if there's habitable space above the garage, a bedroom above the garage or not. To me, the issue is, does the structure of the garage impair the sight line uh, for any, because that's the reason you have 25 feet back from a road as opposed to 20 feet. Does it impair the sight line if you're on Great Western Road and turning onto Herring Run Road? Is the garage getting in the way of seeing cars exiting from Herring Run Road? I would submit that it doesn't. It's worked very well for 10 years. There's been no accidents at that intersection and, 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 and Mr. Mr. Pat's and his vehicles have not gotten in the way of or impeded traffic or caused any kind of hazard there uh, for the last 10 years. So um, he now has a hardship, um, uh, financial and just but the, the, using his residence the way he needs to with a, an expanded kitchen imposes a hardship on him and he's seeking a variance for the same reasons, the topography, um, the septic system, all of that, um, and asks that the, is hoping that the board could see its way to um, releasing that condition of only storage above the garage. Again, I don't see what purpose that served. You have the structure, you have the structure. Um, also, I noted in the request that there are landscape walls on either side of the driveway. They're very nicely constructed. They're less than four feet in height. Um, the cement stone walls, very attractive, but also they serve a purpose because Mr. Pat's indicated to me that the significant runoff from Herring Run Road, um, when it rains and snows, um, onto his driveway, onto his property, and that, especially the northerly, northeasterly wall, stops that runoff and erosion of his property from um, the runoff from the street. So they do serve a purpose, um, and he's asking that if the board thinks it needs to grant a variance for those walls, that he be allowed to keep those attractive walls in place that also serve a function for his property. Um, if the, so in summary, um, his argument is that if you release that condition and grant the variance to allow him to put a bedroom above the garage as shown on the plans, that there would be no substantial derogation from the intent or purpose of the bylaw. There would be no increase in traffic, congestion, or hazard. The sight line would still remain okay, no change to the exterior of the structure. Um, and there would be no substantial detriment to the public good. We ask that you grant the variance to expand the second floor of the garage, the habitable space into the second floor of the garage so he can construct a bedroom there. Thank you. Okay. Um, I actually, I look back at the, I had read it before we're getting ready for the meeting, but I just looked to reconfirm my memory, which isn't the greatest. And I was at that meeting. I was an alternate member there, as was Mr. Hederstedt. You remember him? Oh, yeah. 
but I don't remember why the board, the voting members decided on this particular condition that it was still our second floor was only going to be used for storage. Um, I don't either, Mr. Chairman. I checked my notes and I searched my brain. I don't, I don't know why they imposed it, and I so I, I can't answer that. No, I think there was discussion. I seem to vaguely remember there was discussion about it. And I think the board maybe was kind of divided on who was going to support the, uh, the motion and who wasn't. And that was sort of a compromise to get the votes is my vague, very vague recollection. But it, it, it doesn't seem to make much sense to me. Um, I, I think I would support changing the variance. I don't want to grant a new variance. I don't think that's necessary. Um, I would want to see some contour uh, contour lines on the plot plan before that. I think though we can legitimately change the variance in, in the sense it doesn't seem to make any sense or serve any purpose, at least at this point in time. On the re landscaping walls, retaining walls, they appear to go beyond the property line. Am I misreading? misreading that or not no that's correct they do they go but the property line as i said earlier is about four to five feet from the asphalt they do no denying it they go beyond the property line yeah i guess um to the board members i don't think the board should approve the retaining walls beyond the property line that's up to the applicant and whoever it's a private road, apparently, whoever has road jurisdiction, uh, I don't want the board to okay something beyond the property line. That's not appropriate. And I don't know if we need to handle that as a variance or we, we, I, we might be able to do that. The retaining walls is a special permit because there's already They're already within the, the setback, and this sort of um, is an extension of that. I, I guess my preference would be to handle the, the walls as a special permit. That would, Mr. Chairman, that would be fine. Um, I will say these walls have been there more than six years, so if they're in violation of zoning, it's not, it, 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 the, the town could not, um, uh compel him to remove them um but it, it granted they are beyond his property line so i i don't think the board could legitimately grant any relief but i think a special permit would be fine to allow them um up to the property line and i think you could amend the variance instead of a granting a new variance just amend the variance to remove the condition Yes, yeah, that's what I would suggest. Um, Brian, comments, questions? Yeah, I guess my, uh, first of all, I'm in, overall, I'm in favor of the petitioner's request, but uh, Bill, this, this is a non-conforming lot, correct? It's a uh, pre-existing non-conforming lot, correct. So, I'm not quite sure why that, I mean, I'm in favor of this thing, but why we wouldn't just be granting a special permit for the work in the garage versus a variant, it's, you know, that's okay. my... That's, a, that's an excellent question. If I may address that, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Okay. Um, I don't want to argue against myself here. Um, but you asked the question, but so legally, the answer is, in my opinion, that you can't grant further relief. If you granted a variance, you allowed a, a non, the board allowed a non, granted a relief to allow a non-conformity to exist. So it's supposed to be 25 feet from the lot line. You granted relief, a variance to say you can come to 20.2 feet from the lot line. We cannot now use the Gale case to piggyback the variance to say that 
it's a special permit under the Gale case. It's it's still a variance, in my opinion. We need to. I think the relief would be to amend the condition and just say we're removing the condition so that you can have habitable space on the second floor of the garage. Well, wouldn't we be removing the condition and then granting the special permit? Just well, no, the special per permit is only for the uh, landscape walls. No, I meant for the garage. That's for the I'm garage. I don't no, think I think I just for the garage they have to have for the garage they have to have an amendment to the variance. Okay. Or a new variance, but the, I don't I don't see any need for that. We simply take out the uh, restriction. Yes, because I would agree. Chris. Be obviously, uh, having some information on why that condition was put into effect uh, would be certainly helpful. But if this would have come in today, uh, the need for a garage and and then a space above it, you know, given the shape of the lot and everything, we would probably grant it. In my opinion, I would I would grant it. So I have no problem. You know, no matter what they're reasoning was 11 years ago seems reasonable to grant it now we leave now yeah I, I just don't remember what the rationale on that there was a lot of discussion about extra bedrooms and so on and so forth but i, I think really it was just a compromise to get four votes tim yes i i do have a question um, it's pretty similar, I think, to uh, Mr. Sullivan's. But so, so ten years ago, he got a variance for the truck and for safety and for, uh, for the topography. And I'm, I'm just wondering. And I know it's like you said with the condition of the storage only. It's a little different in this case. But you can't legally. I, I'm you know trying to understand why you can't get a variance ten years ago and then apply for a special permit you know, 10 years later to add more kind of, you know, like a, a bedroom or, or, or more stuff like that, other than the, uh, the hardship of the garage. Correct. Okay. Because, because um, we don't have a, a variance does not create a pre-existing non-conformity. It doesn't predate the zoning bylaw that says you cannot be closer than 25 feet to your lot line, your 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 uh, the street line. If the house had already existed, structure had already existed before that 25 foot setback was adopted, then we'd be pre-existing non-conforming, and then we could go special permit under the Gale case. But you can't use a variance to then introduce a special permit under the Gale case. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, Jamie? Uh, I just had a thought about, uh, at the time, was there uh, uh, a concern over the amount of habitable space in, in the, the house? I mean, it's not, I don't think it's relevant to, to right now, and I agree with the chairman, but... Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I I tend to agree with the with, with Mr. Ryer that um, it was uh, okay. You know, we'll give you the garage, but we get we have to take something back. Okay. No, I'm I'm in, I'm in favor. I agree with the teacher. Uh, Dale, I have no questions. Anyone in the public like to comment on this petition? No, hearing no one, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Aye. Al, so moved. Second by Jamie. Uh, all in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Okay, five votes. Public hearing closed. Um, any discussion by the board? J uh, Brian?
Ryan, you're on mute. Okay. Yeah, I'm on now. And I'm, and I'm still working on my learning curve. And just a question regarding the walls in the driveway, uh, Bill, when is it landscaping and when is it a wall that needs to get a permit? Because I, I, I can understand why the owner put the wall up there in the driveway for a landscaping type thing. And uh, I'm kind of surprised that it required requires a motion on the board a variance to do that. So, okay. Mr. Chairman, do you want me to answer that? Sure, go ahead. All right. Um, retaining walls have become an issue, um, especially in the last four or five years. Uh, but the, the bylaw says that um, in, it, if you build a structure, you have to be, you have to meet setback requirements. Okay, so a structure is defined in the bylaw as any combination of materials designed to give shelter or support. So when you put rocks together and cement them together, you're creating a structure that is designed to give support. And if you do that, then you're supposed to meet the setback requirement. However, another part of the bylaw says if the structure is under four feet in height, then you cut the setback in half to 12 and a half feet instead of 25 feet for a wall. Up. So if it wasn't, if, if those walls were not providing support or, or holding back the lawn and this was there for aesthetic purposes, it would be okay. No. A wall is a structure designed to give support. You can sit on it. You can stand on it. I thank you. I don't like the bylaw, but that's what it says. And the building inspector has consistent inspectors have consistently um, interpreted it that way. But I think it would be fine. Okay. Fence, that's like a split rail fence would be fine, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll make the motion on this one. In case 2021-10, um, Anthony W. Pats has applied for a change in a variance granted by the board in case 2009-24 in order to add a bedroom above a pre-existing non-conforming attached garage. Um, the board hereby amends the decision in case 2009-24 by removing and revoking the condition that provided that the second floor of the garage only be used for storage. In addition, the board grants a special permit for the existing landscaping walls bordering the driveway, but only insofar as they are located on the applicant's property. The board finding that uh, such special permit uh, is justified under the bylaw since it will intensify one or more existing nonconformities, will not create any new nonconformity, and will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing structure. Um, I don't know. I, I, Probably shouldn't do this in the middle of a motion, but uh, are you, do you have enough room to put your construction vehicles on your property, Mr. Pants? Go ahead. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, the special permit is granted subject to the condition that during the life of the project, all construction vehicles shall be parked on the property and not on Herring Run Road or Great Western Road. 
It is a further condition of this approval that a violation of the terms and conditions of this special permit may be, and the variance uh, change may be enforced as a violation of the Harwood Zoning Bylaw pursuant to MGL Chapter 40A, Section 7, and the Harwood Zoning Bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. Uh, could I have a second on that motion, please? Second for Mr. Armstrong. Um, any discussion by the board? Hearing none, all in favor of aye, 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 aye. All right, motion granted. You have your change to the variance and a special permit. Good luck Thank on the permit. Yep, yeah, you're welcome, Attorney uh, Crowell. We will see you next month, I guess. Yes, you will. Thank you. Okay, have a great Easter. All those that are on. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> minutes. Did anyone have any comments on the minutes from our February 24th, 2021 meeting? Yeah, did, did I hear a yes? No. Okay, I'll move that we uh, approve the minutes of the February 24, 2021 meeting as written. Can I have a second, please? Second. Second from Mr. Murphy, uh, discussion by the board. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye, 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 aye. Okay, the minutes are approved. Uh, any new business from anyone? Shayla. Just, um, just a reminder that the new cases that have come in and that will be coming in are coming in electronically. And so they might look a little different when they are attached in a cella. It might all be as a cluster rather than separated the way they have been as the um, um, application and narrative would be separate from the plot plan would be separate from the building plans, some may just be a larger attachment with all of the information. Okay, but they will be separated by case, right? Oh, yes. document. Okay, that's fine. Will they still um, be on the attachments? Excuse me. Yes, they'll all be attached under a cella. It's just the if it says um, application documents, it means all of them. I see. Okay. I see. And I want to wish Shayla very good luck on her medical procedures. I will be um, at the uh, April meeting and be handling that. I oh, don't. Okay. I thought you were oh, two meetings. Okay. I don't go in until um, May the twenty. Okay. Um, everybody saw. Oh, the um, ethics training. Is anybody not done the ethics training? Jamie, okay, you have not done it? Okay. Yeah, April 9th is the deadline. Otherwise, they do get on our case about it. And if you've done it, um, hopefully you've already sent it to Anita Doucette, our town clerk. But if not, you can email to Anita. Um, her email is, I think it's a Doucette at town of Harwich, U.S. It's, it's a you said at town.harwich.ma.us, but it's on the website. You can just go to clerks and click on her name and it'll go there. Yeah, you don't have to mail it. You can just email it as an attachment. So if you could do that, Jamie, thank you. Because they do they do ask periodically. It's sort of a nuisance. I love um, the the only other thing was we got that report from whoever they were on the 40 B's. I guess, I guess we've gotten that for years. I never pay much attention. It, it all goes to somebody else in the town who really does look at it. We get it simply because we have jurisdiction over the 40 B's, but we don't really have any follow on responsibility unless they wanted to change uh, a plan. Then they do have to come back to us and they have sometimes. Um, I can't think of anything else at the moment. So unless someone else has something, 
Um, and Shayla, I may not be able to attend the meeting in April. I'll, I'll be in town, but I may not have a chance to view the properties. I'll just be getting back into town. So okay. I'll try to see what's online, see what I can uh, maybe view the properties before I leave on the holiday, but uh, we'll see. I'll yes. let you know. Yeah, if not, just let me know. Um, and what you could do is still attend the meeting if you wanted to and just not vote on the cases. If you wanted to just see what was going on, it's up to you, Chris, your call. Uh, I know you know you're very faithful. You're all very faithful. So if you can't make a meeting, that's certainly understandable. It's um, been less of a problem because where are we going to go during this Dagon pandemic? But um, I know it gets to be more troublesome when we have the in-person meetings, which I suppose at some point in this century that will happen again, but who knows when. So have a great Easter, everyone. Stay well. Uh, has everybody gotten their shots except maybe Tim? He's younger, but the rest of us old guys all have gotten our shots. Maybe not Shayla either. I don't know. I'll be getting um, mine next week. Okay. Tim, you haven't, have you been able to get them yet? I have not. Okay. April 19th, I think you can register everybody, all ages. Um, so that's coming whenever it is, a couple of weeks. Yeah. Now, who knows how long it'll take, but they do seem to be really pumping out the vaccines now. So um, better than when the rest of us tried to get them, whenever it was six, seven weeks ago, it was a nightmare trying to get them, but things seem to be opening up quite a bit now. As my son said, about another five weeks, we can be able to go up to uh, the, the Jiffy check and get a, a tank of gas or a oil change and get a shot while we're waiting. So <laughs> they'll be giving them out like they used to give out green stamps. Anyway, have a great holiday. I'll take a motion to adjourn the meeting, please. So by Al, could I have a second? Second by Brian. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. And that's it. Thank you all and good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Happy Easter. Thanks again for uh, participating.